There we go. DJ Scratching, new device. A while ago, I made a digital sampler using a RAM chip, and I added this DJ Scratch wheel as an effect, uh, and it worked pretty well at the time, uh, but it wasn't ideal. It used an ADC to control the sound, and then there was noise. The way the sampler worked was it uses a RAM chip at its core, which is controlled by a bunch of binary counters. And by manipulating the binary count, you can control the bits of data. So in addition to building another one, I had the idea of developing uh, a way to manipulate the clock signal, uh, similar to the way you would manipulate the clock in a record, going backwards and forwards at varying speeds in time and manipulating the uh, address lines that way. And as a fun little interface, I decided to use a linear potentiometer, which works just like a uh, rot rotational potentiometer. Uh, this one happens to have uh, a, be a, a double potentiometer or a stereo potentiometer. So we're gonna use that as our interface. I have here a 10K uh, linear potentiometer and basically it's a double potentiometer so the pinout is drawn out here and this is a stereo potentiometer and how it corresponds to the pins on a regular potentiometer are shown I have one side wired as a voltage divider going between uh, 5 volts and ground and the other side in the opposite direction and so if I Turn it on, we're gonna see, you see the, the slider is at the lower pole here. Let's watch the, and uh, that means that that's at five volts. And if I slide it, you can see what happens to the two outputs. So let's see what we can do with that. Now I have a comparator on one of the outputs. And you can see how easily this slides and gives us two different tracings and of analog zero to five volt uh, voltage. If I go below the halfway point, the light goes off. If I go right to the halfway point, it's barely on that light. Cool. So now I have this setup where I put a CD4046 um, voltage controlled oscillator chip. And uh, basically, what I have is uh, uh, the way this chip works is you have a um, powering ground and then you have a um, timing resistor here, which is a 5.1K resistor, and a timing capacitor between pins six and seven, um, which is a 1.5 nanofarad. Uh, pin four is the output. Pin five is a clock inhibit, so it has to have a ground if, uh, to allow the clock to work. Um, and uh, and um, I have the voltage control source is going into pin nine and basically that's coming from our little uh it's going through a voltage divider between two 100k resistors um and so when the comparator goes on uh when it's more than 2.5 volts going on the upside uh, i have it oscillating so let's see what the oscillation frequency looks like it goes to 2.35 kilohertz and as I increase the voltage here by raising this, it goes way up to 44 kilohertz. Um, and 
that's at, to find the range here, you have to, I'm going to go down to the point where the capacitor goes, or the comparator goes off, which is, should be at 2.5 volts, and right there. So that, I like that frequency sweep, and uh, we're going to do this with two of them. Uh, so let's see how this works. Now I have added a second uh, CD4046 in the same configuration as the previous one. And so I have it, but I have the output going from the other um, side of the uh, 10K potentiometer, linear potentiometer here. And uh, the only difference is now that when I slide this up, the comparator shows the up direction, and when I slide it down, it shows the down direction. But it switches frequency. As I slide this up, the frequency of this one should get higher, and the frequency of this one should get lower, and vice versa. So if I show the, um, as I go up, it goes to 48 kilohertz. Uh, as I go down, that goes to 48 kilohertz and at the lowest setting which is right when the um, slide is right in the middle it should be about four kilohertz so it goes from about uh and that's a good sweep for me from my intent my purposes with this um now we have a basically a switching voltage controlled oscillator that switches based on the sliding mechanism and that gives you the potential or the comparator which is the lm393 gives you basically a a sense of which direction you want it to oscillate faster um, so if you had a counter that can count up or down and that determines the direction then we can determine the speed of the count based on this little slide. So let's give it a shot here. So now I wanna add some indicator lights uh, for when it's going forward versus reverse. And, um, and I'm gonna need an inverter to come out of the comparator to make that happen. And ultimately this will lead to some uh, ability to form control logic the comparator output is going to at the moment is going through this resistor to an LED. Also, I have a transistor here, uh, 2N2222 transistor that I wired is a NOT gate. So this LED uh, should be the inverted version of what this shows. So let me turn that on and let me go back to this. So if I go up, that one goes on. That one, if I go down, that one goes on. And it switches halfway through. So that's the direction indicator. Going forward, going back, going up, going down, going up, going down. And you can see the, the waveforms. And I use that, uh, not only is the directionality um, indicator on our uh, binary counters that I'm gonna use, but um, I'm going to use this to control the chip inhibit pins of the CD4046 voltage controlled oscillators. In order to be able to switch on and off the VCOs. And once again, I have this linear uh, potentiometer to um, voltage controlled oscillators using the CD4046. And each one of those is uh, connected to the output of this comparator, which is an LM393. And when this voltage is above 2.5, um, it below and above 2.5. And then it, um, when this is on, it stops the opposite um, CD4046 the inhibit pin and that is an inverter that stops the opposite one when the voltage is high so when I uh, 
back this up, you can see when I get to the middle, it's a very low frequency thing. But if I go up, it goes high, and then it goes down, and then it switches over to the opposite side one, and then goes down. So these are basically ored together using diodes. At the low end of things, it's about uh, two and a half kilohertz. And it switches to the opposite one there. So I'd say that's working fairly well. And I think that's the circuit I'm going to use. So while the interface is very smooth and easy to operate and uh, the voltage sweep is, is good on further playing around with it, uh, it turns out that the um, voltage sweep isn't as good based on the corresponding frequencies. And so in order to do that, I had to adjust the uh, frequencies coming out or the voltage coming out of the um, stereo potentiometer. And I added two diodes in order to decrease the voltage and change it around the um, settings in order to get a voltage sweep between 1.25 and 3 volts, which corresponded to a much better frequency sweep. I'm this a little bit. And now I have the control voltage for the 4046, CD4046 going through two diodes to decrease it a little bit. Then I uh, made the voltage divider less harsh with a 47K resistor and a 100k resistor to ground, and I changed the timing capacitor to a 2.2k one. Now I have a much bigger sweep over a smaller area of exposure. So, now if you can see on the oscilloscope here, I have, um, it goes all the way from about one kilohertz or less than that, 700 kilohertz, um, two, all the way to almost 90 kilohertz, which for a 16 kilohertz sampled, uh, audio signal, this becomes, um, almost, uh, five times the um or, or you know five times the uh speed and goes down to low and so with this excursion very little excursion i could get to going through the audio signal very quickly and at the bottom of the blue tracing with the control voltage signal and the excursion with the diodes and uh voltage divider combination it goes from Basically, it turns on at 1.2, uh, even less than that, before it switches over, and goes all the way up to almost 3. So it's a much shorter control sweep, and makes it for an easy, interactive uh, kind of interface for a... Uh, memory saved signal in terms of adjusting this playback speed and direction. <laughs> cool. Now uh, here it is, the interface. forward, going back, hit the direction indicator in the blue, big sweep goes all the way to 92 kilohertz, and down to 1 kilohertz. 
this. Going low, going high, same thing. Indicator lights, forward, reverse. Works. So now here I have the board and the interface in a nice little enclosure and I have it connected to the beginnings of my new digital sampler that I'm building, which is based off the same design. Uh, and there you can see the LEDs um, taken away in various directions. And these are once again controlled by CD4029 binary counters, a total of five of them uh, for 17 total address lines. Um, so when you can see here the frequency sweep and in the yellow tracing and the blue is the direct, the blue tracing on the oscilloscope is the direction going forward and backward. And you can see the LEDs counting up when the blue tracing is up and down when the blue tracing is down and at various frequency sweeps. And with very fine movements, you can control a fairly large frequency sweep and it should create the desired effect in the resultant audio um, data values present at all of the respective address line locations. I've put in the RAM chip and have recorded something. So let's see what it sounds like. So I recorded a new sample, the classic scratching sound, which is this. <coughs> switch the timer to do this. And it mimics the effects of a record being spun backwards and forwards at varying speeds. That works pretty well. Now let me stop it. And that's the that's the classic record scratch sound sample that everybody uses. So I'd say that works pretty well. So I'm gonna leave you guys with the pinout here of the linear double potentiometer and the full schematic of this particular circuit. I hope you guys follow along uh, with my build of the next sampler 2.0. So here's the schematic and once again, thanks for watching. If you guys wanna see the original video of my original uh, digital sampler project, I'll put the link in the description.